Welcome back. Today, I'd like to answer um, an interesting question I've fielded, which is A, do lady ballroom dancers have to wear high heels? And B, um, if they do, why? And this is a great question. Um, so here's the good news. If you do Pro-Am, um, other than like um, like open scholarship, like the more elite gold levels, hey, wear whatever heel height works for you. The judges know you're not a professional dancer. You're probably a little bit older. Um, you're probably doing this as a hobby and um, they understand that an 80 year old lady, for example, is not gonna probably be able to go out there and dance in a three inch heel. At that point, we have a lot of wear and tear in our feet. Um, the bad news is if you are dancing an amateur, especially championship level, certainly open pro, unfortunately, uh, the answer is yes. You've gotta wear these bad boys. Um, and I'm gonna um, share with you three reasons um, my coaches have all consistently given me about why we have to do this or why we should do this. Okay, number one, it's firstly, um, the heel extends the leg line, the ankle line. Um, so there's a twofold benefit to this in Western society. Um, many people value um, a more slim figure, a more slim leg. And so the heel gives more of an illusion um, to a slim leg. Um, again, this is not a personal value statement. It's just what I've been told. And so I'm just being honest and passing that along to you. Um, but another part of this that I actually fully agree with, um, it does maximize the leg line um, in terms of when you're in a heel, it's easier to make one line from your toe all the way to your knee than if, for example, you're wearing a work boot or Doc Martin. Most street shoes will kind of hold your foot in this position, which is a broken line. This is one line. And unless we're talking about hip hop, in, in most styles of dance, minimal body lines is more pleasing to look at. Um, in those partner dances, that's definitely the case. Even a non-dancer would look at the couple and recognize, hmm, that looks pretty. Um, uh, I've also been told related to this that it's best for most ladies to select a heel that is in a flesh tone if you are just wearing tan legs or a black shoe if you're wearing black fishnets that further adds to the illusion of an extended one line. Now, this day and age, certainly, if you're wearing a fuchsia gown, hey, go ahead and have your fuchsia shoes matched. But if you do, I would recommend making sure you have very flexible and strong ankles and that you're really able to articulate this um, so that it looks like one straight line. Um, unless you're at a really elite level, I'd probably go with that flesh tone um, just because, hey, when you're competing, you, it's good to say, uh, to hedge all of your bets. Okay, um, secondly, I have been told that wearing heels um, helps promote the proper technique for the follow. So in the International Latin, and I have previously, uh, and Rhythm, I've, and I've pre previously posted videos on dance shoes and what they look like, why we wear them, where to get them. Um, I can post links to those previous videos in the description. But anyway, um, in Latin, we generally wear, this is a three inch heel, okay? Um, and when you do that, it pitches your body naturally forward in that high heel as opposed to no heel, okay? And certainly in the Latin dances, you want your body up and forward to your partner and not back behind your butt with slouched shoulders. So I would agree that the three inch very high heel does um, propel your body a little bit to the correct position. Um, and in my experience, you know, the men with that one and a half inch Cuban heel do have a harder time in Latin with that forward posture, just because the ladies are naturally gonna be pitched there by those high heels, okay? 
Um, now the ballroom is a bit different. That shoe generally has a closed toe and that's a two and a half inch heel. So it is for me a little more comfortable. Um, and again, I've been told that the reason is it will naturally pitch your knees up into your partner. Um, that way you're sustaining your own weight on the balls and toes of your feet rather than leaning back into your partner's arm, which would make you more heavy in his arm if he's, you're kind of pulling him down um, onto you. Um, so, uh, and I do think that there's some legitimacy to that, okay? Um, and number three, I've been told simply, it's a cultural expectation. Um, so for example, I don't know the rules in elite gymnastics, but I, imagine it's probably okay with the rules if you go out onto the um balance beam and wear baggy sweats but is that gonna help your marks probably not they probably can't see those beautiful body lines right um so is it is it gonna disqualify you in ballroom no um but honestly it is gonna hurt your marks and i i'm just being honest in the feedback i give you on this channel um so can this wreak havoc on the health of ladies feet yes and so for that i apologize and i've also posted videos previously on that and the mechanics behind that um and you know honestly um i should do a follow-up video to this one today on foot care um, because I've been blessed to dance for decades in heels and not have bunions or corns or hammer toes. Um, but you know, that doesn't happen on its own. There's actually some things I very proactively do outside of dancing to maximize the length of my, um, dance life. Cause I want to dance till I'm 150 years old and I'm sure you do too. So anyway, um, if you found that to be interesting, Hey, like, if you like all things ballroom dance, I post most days, Hey, subscribe to my channel and I'll have something new and hopefully entertaining for you tomorrow. So thanks for joining me today. <laughs> Bye guys.